I recently got asked on my Instagram how I film my Instagram Reels. I've done a pretty simple tutorial before, but I wanted to show you in depth, step by step, how I film and edit my Instagram Reels so you can learn how to do it exactly like I do it. If you like videos like this, make sure to like this video, jingle all my bells and buttons for new videos every Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. My name is Janet, I'm an ex-Disney artist turned independent creator, and I've managed to grow my Instagram to over 49 9k followers mainly through Instagram reels. So let's get started. The first step is to choose what you are going to film. For this video, I'm going to assume that you are a creative artist type like I am and that you want to create reels around your craft or art business. So I'm going to focus on the process reel. I'm not really going to cover how to film trending reels, which are more about trends and are particular to each one. You basically have to film everything from beginning, middle, and end. I don't really like to shoot in segments. I basically set up a camera to film the entire process, which means I have sometimes five to 10 or more hours of footage that I will have to cut down into multiple different reels. The nice thing about these process videos is that you can basically chop it up into many different reels, different parts from beginning, middle, end of your whole entire process. Instead of creating just one reel for one idea, you really get to take people on a journey through the entire process of the creation. That's the pro of the process reel type of content, but the con is that it can get a little boring, especially if you only have one camera or a phone. So that leads me to my second step, which is to have multiple different shot variations. It's really important when you are filming a process to have at least in my opinion, three camera angles. You have the master shot, which is kind of wide and it shows everything. It shows maybe some of your hands, it shows the image that you're working on or sculpture or whatever it is that you're doing. And then you will have a slightly closer wide. It shows the entirety of the object that you're working on or drawing or whatever it is, and maybe less of your hands or props or whatever it is that you decorate your set with. And then finally, it's really important to have close-up shots. Shots where it's just about beauty. It's not really about seeing anything because no one's really going to learn or take any value out of these shots, but they really dazzle the eye and make people engage with your reels. So for me, when I'm drawing, I like to get really close up shots of the pencil grazing against the paper or just a line being drawn instead of the entire drawing. Many of you might be filming on a phone and might not have three different cameras to use in order to get all three of these shots. So what also works, warning, it will take a lot more time to record what it is you're doing compared to setting up three different cameras recording you at the same exact time. So what you do is you take your phone and you set up the wide shot and you draw maybe four, five, 10 minutes, maybe more. And then you set up a slightly closer wide shot, draw for 10 minutes, and then maybe you take the camera in one hand and then you draw with the other to get the close up. For these type of shots, you really don't need to be holding the camera for five, 10 minutes while you draw because it's very unnatural. You can draw for maybe a minute, two minutes, just to get that line or just to get the paintbrush dipping into the paint or the water or whatever it is. And then you repeat and repeat. So what's happening is you're basically constantly changing the camera, which is your phone, to the three different shots that I talked about. This does mean it's going to take you a really, really long time to finally finish your drawing or whatever it is that you are showing. But if you want those really engaging shots and a really engaging reel, similar to the reels that I have on my page, that's basically how I do it. If you are not too ambidextrous, <laughs> where you can do something with your right hand and your left hand at the same time. It just takes practice. One thing to note is I am recording these videos specifically for my vlogs and content here on YouTube. So I will be recording horizontally. If you are really focusing on Instagram Reels, you should probably record vertically on your phone or whatever camera allows you to record vertically. There are a lot of tripods and phone clamps that even I personally use when I am recording vertical content. I will link them 
down below. You can get them, they're pretty cheap on Amazon. But if you are like me and you are creating long form content where you will be uploading to YouTube, let's say, because why not? You are creating the content anyways, you might as well post it everywhere and you are filming horizontally, make sure when you are composing your shots, make sure there is a lot of room around the sides and the top. More room than you think because you are going to conform the video to a vertical format like Instagram Reels. So you'll be basically cutting off these sides. And if you film too close to your subject or whatever, it'll be really close up and really unnatural. One of my mistakes when I I first started doing this and occasionally it still happens and don't really worry about it it's just one Instagram post it's not going to ruin your entire feed and no one's really going to notice if it's too close but just a thing to note make sure there's a lot of extra room around it once you have everything filmed then it's time to edit now I don't edit an app I used to back when we were creating Instagram reels specifically for Instagram reels or TikTok, and it does save a lot of time because you don't have to go in and edit on a computer wait for footage to load and if you can do that I highly recommend you do that the problem the problem with that is it's only for Instagram Reels or TikTok because it's composed specifically for those apps. It's filmed vertically, you don't have to edit, it's timed to the music. That makes it really, really hard to then take that footage and somehow use it in a YouTube video, for example. With my process of creating a long form piece of content, I film everything horizontally and then I go and edit after the fact. This does take a lot more time, a lot more time, but I'm creating a lot of content. So however many hours I spend editing a YouTube video, I create basically at least two weeks worth of content. So I don't really have to worry about Instagram until two weeks from now. So the program that I use is Final Cut Pro 10. I used to use Premiere Pro and I still do sometimes because I do have both editing softwares. I tend to like Final Cut Pro more because it's a little bit more beginner friendly. It doesn't require a crazy computer setup and it doesn't lag as much. From here, I basically, I put in all the clips and just choose the best clips. What a lot of people tend to do, and they take an hour's worth of footage, 20 minutes worth of footage, and they do a time lapse. They basically speed up the whole entire process and post that, which is fine. It's just not very engaging. That's why I take multiple different types of shots to get wides and close-ups and I can edit to the music and it can be interesting. Even though it can kind of feel like overkill because I have five hours worth of footage to cut down into a few minutes, I basically just skim through most of it and pick the best shots according to the story of the process that I want to tell. The way I think about editing these reels is there needs to be a beginning, middle, and end. What that could look like is me starting the drawing. The middle could be me doing a sketch of the drawing, and the end could be I finished the sketch. And I think about this for each step of the process. It requires you to really think about what is your process? What is step one? What is step two? What is step three? That way each reel feels finished for the most part. It feels like the person who watched the reel got some kind of closure. They, they reached the end of the story. And I think about this for each step of the process. So I end up reducing the five hours worth of footage down to about three, four, five minutes worth of YouTube content showing the entire process. And then I go through and do another pass and cut it down even shorter to get 15 second clips of each part of the process. Another way you can do this, especially if you're not a YouTuber, you want to focus on growing Instagram really, really hard. In my opinion, it's a better way to do this, but I simply just don't have the time to focus on so many different types of video content, is to edit to the music. So in a previous Instagram tips video, which you can check out over here, I explained how to find trending sounds and trending topics over on TikTok. You can do the exact same thing on Instagram. Instagram. Feature Janet here. I realized you can't actually download the music from your Instagram Reels until you've actually posted it. And there's no real way to post it privately like there is on TikTok. So I'm going to show you how I do it on TikTok 
in case you do have a TikTok. Otherwise, you can't really do this without actually making your Instagram Reels with Instagram Reels. So on my TikTok, if you go to film a TikTok and you hit add sound, and let's say you are going to use any trending sound, you then record, let's say I am recording myself, and once you get to the post section, you can choose who can watch this video. So instead of having it set to everyone, set it to only me, which means it's going to be a completely privated video, and then hit save to devices to make sure this video saves to your phone. You can see the private video it has uploaded. So if you head to your private video section, you'll see your private videos. If you head to your phone photos section, you will see that the video has downloaded onto your phone. You can then transfer this video onto whatever editing app that you are using and then just extract the audio only to edit to. That way you don't have to figure out weird ways to download copyrighted music or pay for every single one. You just download it from the app. By editing to the music, you guarantee a lot more watch time. If you didn't already know, any kind of app, social media, platform really values watch time if you are creating video content. It's not necessarily about the amount of views that you get, it's about quality content. And how does an algorithm know if your content is good quality? Well, if people are watching all the way through or re-watching it multiple times, then it's a signal to them that, oh, people really like this content. They're not just skipping past it. If you edit to the beat, it really guarantees people will stay on your content longer. So if you really want to hit Instagram reels hard, I really recommend editing to the music. So once I have the entire long form piece of content down, edited, perfected, and I have it segmented into a bunch of different 15 second clips or less, I then conform the video into the vertical format. And this is why I recommend Final Cut Pro 10 or Premiere Pro. They can both do it. I think Final Cut Pro calls it conforming, Premiere Pro calls it auto reframe. And what it basically does is it automatically composes your vertical image vertical. This saved me so much time when I learned how to do this. You might have to adjust certain individual frames that might be composed a little awkwardly, but for the most part, it really saves you a lot of time. The next step, which is, in my opinion, one of the most important steps, sometimes I forget, and I skip this step, and it's to color correct. You either have to set up the lights for what you are filming really, really well, or you color correct. And especially with drawing, you want the white of the paper to really be white, and you want it to be bright because people are looking very carefully at what you are doing. So I go into Premiere or Final Cut Pro, and I will up the brightness and make the video a little bit more cool and majestic because I've noticed people really like that look. If it tends to lean more yellow, it's not really the best look for Instagram because it immediately tells people that you're filming on a not so high quality camera, but color correction and in general, making your footage appear a little bit brighter than it should be. If you do that, it will make your reels look a thousand times more professional. And then I export in 15 second segments, usually with a beginning, middle, and end planned within them. And then I will schedule them out using later, which I highly recommend. If you want to learn more about how to grow your business using social media, check out my free guide, 8 Steps to Launch Your Online Store. Head over to honeyandabson.com to help support this channel by buying some merch. Every purchase helps this channel out. Check out these other videos next to learn more about how to grow on social media. If you like the video, make sure to like the video, jingle all my bells and buttons for more art and entrepreneurship type videos, and don't forget to dare to dream.